Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to this video. So today what I want to be going through is uh, possibly why your website isn't converting and re the real differences between websites that are killing it, that are converting really, really well, and those that are not converting at all. Um, and so hopefully you can identify some problems in your website to, to fix that up. Um, the real difference in a conversion rate, you know, from uh, 1% to 2% is obviously doubling the amount of sales that you're extracting from the traffic that you're getting. So looking at things like the things I'm going to talk to you about is super important to your bottom line directly. Literally, if you can increase your, your conversion rate by a, a minuscule amount, um, just something will increase your revenue and your sales quite significantly over the long term. And the, the real benefit of looking at your, your website and the conversions that it's actually generating is that you're paying either in time or in money to get traffic to your website one way or another. And so you've got them there. You've done all the hard work. You've spent your time or money getting them there. And now getting them to your site and converting is the real key and where you really recoup and, and reap the rewards of your hard work. And so this is why it's so important to be continually looking and updating um, your, your website. We, in the very beginning of our, our, our journey, our website, we were looking at our website daily, absolutely daily, because you see the user experience, you see mistakes that need to be fixed. Um, you can do little split tests uh, and compare the results from one, say, month to another. And so there's a few little things in here that I want to go through that can hopefully help you improve your, your conversion rate. So the first and foremost is in the appearance, using professional photos. This is really sort of underestimated and understated. And it's so important to have high quality imagery with your product. Okay, so make sure that they're up to scratch, make sure that they're high res, make sure that they fit within the parameters of, you know, whether you're doing a, um, you know, a carousel at the top, whether you're doing the product shots, make sure they are professional looking and give the customer everything they need to know about what you're actually selling. Literally, if, if, if you don't get this right, you've lost people straight away. They feel, you know, like it's a, a dodgy website or um, that the product's not as quality as it actually is, even though you, you, you I suppose you say so in the, in the descriptions. So look, you look at really high quality. If anything else, have high quality imagery, all right? Number two is the color schemes. So use really kind of soft color schemes. Hopefully you've got some sort of brand colors that you can potentially use, but the only colors that should be sharp and obvious are call to action buttons like add to cart and, you know, check out now. So be really aware of the, the texts that you're using, you know, for fonts, you should be using kind of blacks, grays, and other kind of darker colors. And then any colors that you actually use should be quite soft. So whether it's purples or greens or blues, there shouldn't be harsh colors within your, your website or your scheme. Again, it kind of flags people to um, like dangers or warnings that we definitely don't want to impose on people when they're at our, our website. So be aware of the color schemes. The other thing is be specific to what you want people to do and what you want people to see. So if you have a, a whole host of, of products, for example, you know, don't have them all on the one page. Be specific to the product that you're actually selling. This is probably more relevant to people that are potentially drop shipping or you know, have access to other products or have you know, a broad breadth of um, other products in a specific industry, for example, where they just have all the you know, products on, on, the, on the one page or the front page. So I would recommend that be specific to the product that you want to probably push the most, maybe your flagship product, and um, ensure that people don't get confused when they, they get there about what you guys are actually about. So be specific and even niche down or remove some things temporarily whilst you figure this out for yourself. But don't confuse people with the amount of products that you're actually selling. Okay. Um, the other thing is descriptions. So product descriptions have in your product, everything, your product page, everything people need to be aware about, whether that's sizing, whether that's fabrics, whether that's quality, okay, whether it's the source, be specific and have all the information because once they're in the product page, you don't want them to navigate anywhere else. Uh, include the shipping terms, include, include everything that people need to know, even in little drop downs to make it nice and neat, have reviews in there, but be very uh, conscious that we don't want people to leave this page unless it's an add to cart and check out. If people have to fish around your website for information, you're going to lose them. All right. They may not find their way back and then it just gets too hard and they leave. 
Uh, and we know for a fact that, you know, data tells us that 68%, almost seven out of 10 people who add to cart actually abandon. All right. And probably a lot of those add to cart and then they're going to look for information and they get lost and forget about it. So um, have all your descriptions ready to go in the product page, relevant for people where they can just simply look at it and, and check out and move on. Um, and then the, the, the last thing is social proofing. So whether you have this in your product pitches, um, that's ideal to have obviously people wearing your product, using your product, demonstrating how it works, just to make them feel that they can place themselves in that position of that person. Uh, and the other thing I just mentioned before was, was reviews. Have a lot of social proofing, the most social proofing you can possibly have to make people feel that kind of herd mentality, that they're not, they're not the only one looking at your website or the only one purchasing from you if they get to that point. But these are little things that can help convert. And then they're, they're, they're controllable things that you can help people get them over the line. Because as I say, you've done the hard work to drive them there. Paid or non-paid methods to drive traffic to your site. And the last thing you want them to do is to not convert, you know, trip over at the, the finish line, so to speak. So look, I hope those things really help. Um, it's definitely helped us and we're never done with our you know, website with our customer journey, what we want people to do. We're continually looking and iterating at our websites. But those are the, the main differences that we see between a converting and a non-converting um, professional versus unprofessional uh, Shopify website. So I hope that helps. Any questions, let me know, but uh, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.